here we are in Lee, constituency that has elected Labour MPs for a hundred years until 2019. Now I've got a Tory. What are you going to do about it? Well, it broke my heart when Lee went Tory for the first time. Like you said, after a hundred years of Labour, it's the seat right next door to mine uh, and I know it well. I said at the time that I was going to make it my mission to win back the trust of people that we'd lost. It had been a long time coming and it arrived in 2019 in many parts of the country. And I think that if we are going to win back people's trust, people in towns like Lee have got to be heard. And that's why I wanted to come and listen to people with you today. Let's do some listening. Gloria. How are you doing? Hi, how are you? Hiya. Hi. Hello. This is Lisa. I'm Gloria. Lindsay. Jason. Kevin. Martin. All from Lee. All from Lee. No, I'm from Middlesbrough, actually. Oh, are you? Yeah. Did you change your vote? How do no. you? No. So, so you sound like you're always labour through thick and thin. Mm. I've, I haven't voted a couple of times, but right. I've generally always voted labour. And what about you, Lindsay? Um, no, I didn't vote Labour last time. Did you vote Conservative for the first time last time? Yes. Have you always, did you vote, have you, oh, do you always, always vote, yeah. you always vote Labour? Died in the wool, cut my arm, it's red. Right. Not anymore. Did you vote Labour last time? No. What did you do last time? I voted Conservative. Right. And it was not, not so much to, uh, as a political allegiance, but just to make a point that we've had enough of it. The, the, the basic Labour supporter is not represented by this party anymore. The Labour Party is no longer what it was. And they've abandoned the people who they should be supporting. You're going to the polling station tomorrow. How are you going to vote? I don't know. The reason I vote Labour now is just to get these Tories out. Yeah. Because they, what they're doing is horrible to, to, to poor people. people. I, work, I work in different houses me. I, run my own business, kitchens, bathrooms. I work yeah. in poor houses, I work in rich houses. Yeah. And some of these kids, they're just living in... Po it's poverty, you can see it. They're yeah. just living in poverty. It would have to be for, for the Conservatives because Labour aren't in a position to be a, to be a government. It's all, it's all kicking off around this time. Yeah. <laughs> because, because what, I mean, I don't know what those policies are. Not, not at all. That's, that's one of the problems at the moment, I think. And they've been, they've been hiding behind this... Quote epidemic at the moment. I probably wouldn't vote. Really? Because I, I don't feel represented by anybody anymore. Yeah. Uh, it's probably the first time. I'm, it's probably the first time in my life I just I feel completely unrepresented by anybody. I'm, I'm just thinking it's, it's really interesting. We don't know what what the Labour policies are yeah. on on what everyone's going through right now. But I do know that I wouldn't vote for someone who's now giving people. Three hundred and fifty pound a month energy bills. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not fair. You can't. Yeah. That's not livable. So we. Do, I, I don't know what Labour's policies are. I don't know if I would even vote because there's no one that I can look at and go. Do you know what? You're actually trying to help us. Do you know? It's really interesting to me because a lot of what you've just said is what me and quite a few of the other Labour politicians in the shadow cabinet have been talking about for the yeah. last few weeks, but nobody's heard it. And I find that really interesting. So we've been talking about energy bills. We've been talking about how people are being hit with like a triple whammy because VAT's yeah. high, because people are having sky high energy bills, because wages are low. Um, and the, there's about to be a new tax hike on working people that, yeah. that the Tories have brought in. And we've been saying, you've got to have a windfall tax on the North Sea because they've made record profits. Yes. to actually cut people's energy bills because we need to get money back into people's pockets really quickly now. And the massive one, of course, is the clean air zones are about to come in, yeah. which is another tax on, on people and businesses, which is going to put people straight out of business. If, like, imagine in an ideal scenario, there's a general election tomorrow and there's a political party or a politician, you think, absolutely, yes, that is what I'm voting for. That person, those people have my interests and Lee's interests at heart. What sort of... What would that look like? I think, I think we need... Lee's not had any investment. I mean, I've lived here 20 yeah. years now. When our high street needs, needs that, and that will attract people, it will attract more businesses, mm. and, and it will just be a better, nicer place to live, and it just doesn't seem to be 
come in. But that's private um, investment, isn't it? It's not. Well, no, because we need the level. We need we need some levelling up. They promised mm. us, and that's never that that levelling up has never has never seemed to have arrived. One of the things that we've been saying is should tax the big giants like Amazon more because they don't pay their fair share of tax at the moment. Tax them more and cut business rates for businesses on the high streets. Is that the sort of thing that would... Because that's the only way yeah. anything high streets can be saved yeah. because they're just dying. Yeah. I mean, my daughter, she's 24. I don't think she's ever shopped in Lee since she was about 16. Really? Uh, just a really strong sense that we're not getting it right at the moment and I am determined to win you back. Including you. And hadn't been getting it right for a long time. Well, I, I think that's right. And actually, a lot of what I came into politics to do was about making sure that places like Lee, like Wigan, got a voice in national politics for the first time. Not everyone goes to university. And surely not with the money these days. I mean, what is it now, nine, ten grand a year? Yeah, my, my daughter's just applying for university. She's going to start in September. I'm like, you are 17 years old and you're already, you are going to be £50,000 in debt before you've even started working. Yeah. Does it, is it, make, is it putting her off? Yeah, she's terrified. <laughs> she the first in her family, will she be the first in her family to go to university? Yeah, yeah, she yeah. is, yeah. You can do it, you can do this great job, but we're going to put you £50,000 in debt to do it. And if she doesn't go to university, what do you think she would do? I don't know. I think she, I think right. it would be so absolutely so devastating because there's so no, much there's talent. No, there's yeah. no industry, there's what, no what, jobs, what, what is there? What, what is what yeah. is that do? Yeah. What if if there was you know, if we had really good industry here, if we had like um, I was in Grimsby yesterday and they've got loads of investment in renewables and they've got people coming into apprenticeships to do to learn how to be the sort of engineers of the future and to design all the new technology that's gonna power the country through the next century. If those sorts of jobs and apprenticeships were available, do you think young people round here would Yeah would jump on it? But some do still need to go to university, university and that still yeah. needs dealing with my, my daughter's um, study in law so she needs to go to yeah. university but that doesn't mean that she should have to come out with £50,000 worth of debt so they need, they, need, they need the choices yeah. and they need the chances Absolutely. Yeah. and at the moment both it's avenues really are pretty closed yeah they are most people in Leeds they're still not earning a lot of money but they've all bought their houses so they all think they're middle class and everything. Well, we still live in the council house. No, won't have it any other way. Yeah. I'm quite happy. Yeah, <laughs> I can tell. We both work. And you work at the mill? Yeah, yeah. we both work at the mill. Yeah. yeah. People want to work to make a living. Yeah. And they're getting nowhere because there's, there's nothing there to help them. Yeah. So long, people just haven't been listened to. No, yeah. they're not. And that's why we're here. Just regular people yeah. who are. Uh, are going through all this, who are the ones, who, whoever's put into power, if you like, are the ones who have to deal with it. Yeah. Not them in power, it's the people, you know, like all There's people, people who want to shout out and like, what's going on? Yeah. But there's no, no yeah. one to listen, yeah. you know, there's yeah. nowhere to go to say that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's well, that's my job. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that for you. And thank you so much. Gary, so out of everybody here, you seem mo the most, I mean, you still vote and you, you have a Labour identity and it seems quite clear that you're My father's always told me vote Labour and people who have respect, Second who have known day, in the past, have said, you, you always go Labour because we're a working town, aren't we? Something happened at the last election. Because you said not enough people voted. Labour. People got fed up with stuff not, no change, must have. Nothing was changing. Like I said, Lee has gone to the dogs. Awful at Lee, don't you? If there was one thing that you could say to any politician, say, listen, if you do nothing else, do this to my town, what is it? I'd set police more than anything. Yeah, more, more police. Yeah, police. public police. When was the last time you voted Labour? About 15 years ago. Because, as you said before, Labour were in for 100 years and we changed last time um, to Conservatives. So I think in that time, Labour was still in the last, sort of like, what, seven, eight years of that, 100, you know. And I think we've got to give the guy a chance now. People have been saying for a long time that things aren't working in lots of parts of the country. 
and it's about time that we stood up and did something about yeah. it. It does tend to be the small industrial towns, I think, that are sort of like yeah. falling by the wayside yeah, yeah. now because right. they've lost all their industry and what have you. There's not as much yeah, happening. Yeah. I am going to make it my mission to win you back and right to you deliver are. for this town yeah, and for towns fantastic. like this around the country. Yeah. So we've done some listening. What you learned? I think it's pretty clear that there's no huge enthusiasm for any political party, really. People aren't looking at the Tories and thinking, yeah, these people have got my back, they're definitely going to deliver. But we've got work to do to earn back people's trust in Labour. Those votes will not just come back to us. We're going to have to go out and convince people that we've got a plan. And most of all, what I heard was what I hear back home in Wigan a lot, that people are proud of their areas, they're proud of their communities, but for too long, They've been watching a political conversation that has nothing to do with it. And they want to be back at the centre of our thinking. If we can show that we care about putting money back into people's pockets, that we care about thriving high streets and town centres, that we care that town centres in many parts of the country have become no-go areas because of crime and antisocial behaviour and drugs. If we can show that we care about that and we've got a plan for these places that is, um, is ambitious for them as the people in them. I think that's what it will take and that's what I'm determined to do. Thank you for uh, spending the day with me. Thanks, Lisa Nanda.